Good morning. Each January, I have watched folks speak from this pulpit or in front of their laptop cameras to share their stories of why and how they determine their gifts to Old South. They've inspired me each year to think more deeply about my own giving and uh, my giving here and other organizations. I've so appreciated hearing those stories on a topic we don't often talk about with each other that frequently. My understanding on the importance of giving has been and continues to be an evolution. It began with my parents giving me their church offering envelope and pla to place in the offering plate. It was a moment in the service I looked forward to as I had a role, a task that seemed important. I just assumed they were tithing or giving 10% and took it as fact that is what giving to a church meant as an adult, based on the messages I heard from those churches at the time. It seemed simple, formulaic, and easy. In college, I occasionally visited churches and quickly threw the notion of tithing out the window. I had a part-time job in the student center with inconsistent hours, and no one taught me how to figure out a tithe with that work situation. I decided tithing was just something that I would do when I joined a church after college, was a full-time member with a full-time job. Thinking optimistically that once those two things happened, it would all just make sense. For those years, I would take a quick glance in my wallet as discreetly as possible in the pews. Sometimes I was able to add something to the plate, other times I was not. It changed my view on a past offering from that of an important task that I loved as a kid to one of trying to determine what the expression of the usher meant. Were they responding to me passing the plate without putting anything in it? Were they responding to what I had put in the plate? As a quick aside to the story, having been an usher and working this morning with Adam, Lisa, Susan, and Manuel, I can tell you that the ushers here are doing nothing other than saying good morning with a smile behind their mask. There is no other judgment being given. But back then, it made me start to shy away from giving. My final year of college, I worked on the senior class gift, and this helped bring me back because it reframed it for me. It took it from trying to give money, trying to make a tithe, to realizing it was about the act of a gift, not just about the amount of the gift. I was happy to give my money, knowing that as a collective, many small amounts equal a large sum, and we're making an impact on that institution. I see that pattern repeated today, all the time, when friends are running the Boston Marathon or the Pan Mass Challenge or one of the other maybe 500 road races that happen here in the city. Small amounts, including my own, add up to large and impressive and meaningful amounts. When I first came to Old South in 2011, I followed my approach of a quick glance in my wallet right after the call to offering. I began to think, maybe I should at least try and cover the cost of the bulletin that I was using. I had no idea what it cost to print, so it was a pretty uneducated approach, but no one here was talking about tithing, and so I was starting from scratch on trying to determine how and what to give. And besides that, thinking about 10% and just turning that on overnight seemed simply impossible to do. Once the habit of putting something in the offering plate each week or most weeks was formed, I realized there was a lot of space between tithing and giving what I could. And that space is just as meaningful and important as any other. I happily continued with this pattern and eventually, I even began looking at my wallet before I left home to prepare for the morning's offering. The money that I put in the offering plate was appreciated. I know it was used in important and meaningful ways, but I started to think, what if the church knew about that money when the budget was being put together and finalized? It made me realize that was even more that could be planned and counted on. It sort of felt like I could amplify my gift to Old South simply by telling the church in advance what I was planning to do. That first pledge was not very scientific. I added what I thought I had given in the past year together mixed with what felt comfortable in my monthly budget, and I filled out that pledge card. I did this without too much reflection on why. I started with the amount. At the time, I just knew that I simply believed in the mission of this church, the way that the ideas of beauty, justice, and mercy were discussed in this building, in this city, and at the time shared through the audio recordings online. And then a few years later, the capital campaign began, and I started to think more deeply about my commitment here at Old South, that I want to try and support the church in that way. I reversed the process that I used when I filled out that first pledge card and started with the why instead of the amount. 
The church had given me a group of friends where at coffee hour we would talk about the sermon and anthem or just catch up with one another. I had joined a book group that introduced me to Bonhoeffer, C.S. Lewis's Mere Christianity, N.T. Wright, Marcus Borg. I was a part of the Christian Information Committee meeting monthly in individuals' homes for our breakfast meetings. And I realized that in all of this, my faith was growing. And it was upon that reflection that I realized this was not a place that I just wanted the support in the present, I wanted the support in the future as well. So having made that decision, I then thought about the amount to pledge the campaign. And right before I turned that pledge in, I emailed one of the ministers and just said, it is okay that I pay this over five years, right? It was a big and scary commitment. Each month I put a little in savings so I could write one yearly check in December toward my campaign commitment. It was satisfying in ways I could have not predicted at the beginning, and was probably the defining moment for me when I shifted from thinking about covering the bulletin and maybe a little bit of the cost of the heat to thinking about the present and the future and wanting to contribute in both of those ways. Every year since, I review my reasons for wanting to pledge and my personal financial situation. So why am I filling out a pledge card this year? The past few years have not been easy for any of us. The pandemic continues. The foundation of our democracy is being tested. Killers are walking free and publicly because of a broken justice system. There are growing inequalities. We learn more each day the harm we do to this planet. And I don't always know what to do, what to say, or more importantly, how to support the voices and actions of others. But this church is full of so many intelligent, wonderful people that are teaching me, guiding me, and showing me that faith can be at the center to the response to each of those areas. It is meaningful, and I see that happening to everyone that engages with Old South. I reflect back often to a Zoom series on anti-racism workshops that I attended last year, developed and put together by the wonderful members of our Grace Speaks committee. They challenged me and helped me grow both as a citizen of the world and framed much of that work in a spiritual lens. This is just one example of what inspires me about Old South. The space is not removed from the events happening each day in our lives or the world. The world comes through that wide open door, it comes through the live stream, and it leaves better equipped in so many ways to make an impact, to show that God is present in our lives and in our world, and the stories of a century ago are in fact modern and relevant, and that through that, we can get to work. It is with these experiences and with these convictions that I'm planning for my pledge this year. And in writing this, I finally realized that my evolution and understanding, pledging and giving, will never be complete. This year's change is, uh, as Sean mentioned, the first time I will put together a pledge in consultation with my fiance. But what I do know and have known since I stepped foot in this building 10 years ago is that the world needs more Old South and I need more Old South. And so I'm so thankful for each person and each organization that has taught me the gift of making financial commitments. It brings so much joy, which is something I never imagined when I began this journey. I'm looking forward to turning in my pledge next week.